Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to a new Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls video. Today we're gonna take a look at the level 70 build for the Monk. Now the Monk is one of the classes that I personally wasn't really sure about when I first started leveling it. However, ever since I hit level 70 I've been absolutely loving this class. And I think, maybe besides the Witch Doctor, this right now is definitely my favorite class. Now if you're playing something else than the Monk, maybe you're interested in a different guide, make sure to check all the links right below that like button in the description below. I've done guides for pretty much every single class in the game so far, so make sure to check it out. Like with most classes right now in Diablo 3, you really need to be focusing on some sort of elemental damage. It is quite easy to get about a million DPS, but most of the time after that it gets a little bit tricky getting higher damage, simply because the gear doesn't roll very much higher. So what you're getting into mostly after that is elemental damage. So what we're focusing mostly on in this video is going to be lightning damage, uh, which is going to be the one that I'm going to be focusing on the most. That means that all the skills that you're going to be seeing are mostly focused around dealing extra lightning damage, simply because the multiplier adds up really, really quickly. This build personally works very well for me, however, maybe you want to change a couple of things up, I would definitely recommend you do just that. Make sure you play the playstyle you want to be playing, and not something that I'm doing, because you're the one having fun, right? This build is extremely strong for soloing, I have absolutely no issues whatsoever farming Torment 1 and 2, um, goes very, very smoothly, goes very, very fast as well. So I would definitely recommend you give it a try. Anyway, let's jump straight into the game and I will show you exactly what I've been building so far. Okay, so here we are in the game. Let's first go really quickly over my gear. I'm currently at around 700,000 DPS, around 8 million toughness and healing is around 8,500 and in total I'm currently running 500,000 health. Now you can notice that my toughness is quite high and I'm still trying to scale this back a little bit in order to get some more damage going. However, keep in mind, like I mentioned, there's a lot of lightning damage in my gear, such as for example, this belt right here, lightning skills deals 12% extra damage, um, lightning skills deals 16 more damage on my wrist, um, and you know, on my amulet there's some lightning damage, so there's a whole lot of gear out there um, that will do extra damage when it comes to lightning abilities. And considering most of my abilities are indeed lightning abilities, you gotta multiply the damage that you're seeing on the screen, which means that my character is doing way over 1 million DPS currently. As far as the actual abilities go, these are the ones that I'm currently running. It is going to be Deadly Reach with Scattered Blows, Lashing Tail Kick with Scorpion Sting, Serenity with Ascension, Epiphany with Ascendance, Sweeping Wind with Cyclone, the Mentor of Conviction with Annihilation, and as far as the passives go, it's Transcendence, One with Everything, Seize the Initiative, and Exalted Soul. Now let's jump into every single ability in depth and I'll try to give you the, um, the reason why I've chosen this ability. First off, Deadly Reach with Scattered Blows. Now this is indeed a lightning skill, meaning that it simply deals a ton of damage with the current gear that I've got. This is mostly an ability that is meant to regenerate spirit and is just one that I like a lot. It also allows you to be kiting a little bit if you decide to actually uh, move backwards and you need to get out of stuff. The AOE ability of the Scattered Blows rune is actually very, very useful. Next up we have the big damage dealing ability in this build, it is going to be Lashing Tail Kick with Scorpion Sting. Enemies hit have a 85% of being stunned for 1.5 seconds, um, which is basically just a lightning ability um, that allows you to once again use that damage modifier on your gear, um, meaning that the Lashing Tail Kick does extra damage if your gear has extra bonus damage to lightning. What this ability does? Well, it deals a deadly roundhouse kick that deals 624% weapon damage as physical, meaning that this it's just a straight up incredible damage dealing ability. Next up, Serenity with Ascension. This is just a straight up shield. You can basically be shielded against pretty much everything, meaning that you can stand in fire, you can stand in explosions, you can move through gates um, that usually will, uh, will halt you down. And Serenity just allows you to be protected against pretty much everything that the game has to offer. However, if you don't like this ability and you'd rather have a hue or something like that, Definitely give Breath of Heavens a try or something that you prefer instead, but Serenity with Ascension is a very good all-around ability that is useful most of the time. Next up we have another lightning damage ability, it is going to be Epiphany with Ascendance. Now what this ability does, it is basically an enormously long cooldown, what's well, 60 seconds only, uh, but it's a long cooldown that allows you to nuke down elite packs. So most of the time what happens, I will be wandering around like normal, however as soon as I see an elite pack or a treasure goblin or something that needs dying very quickly, I do activate Epiphany which allows me to basically do a ton of damage and teleport around all the units that I want to kill and all that kind of awesomeness. Um, an incredibly strong ability that I would definitely recommend you do not switch out because it's just very very strong. 
Next up, we have an ability that you might want to be changing around a little bit. It's going to be Sweeping Wind with Cyclone. A lot of monks right now are running Exploding Palm. However, Sweeping Wind with Cyclone is just very, very useful. Basically, what you want to try and do is have this ability active at all times with three charges. What that means is that there will be a whole lot of Cyclones moving around you. However, as soon as you're not attacking something for six seconds, this ability will go away and you need to reactivate it. I have personally been having a lot of success running Sweeping wind but like I said maybe you want to give exploding palm a try instead or maybe even dashing strike if you so desire last but not least we have the mantra of conviction with annihilation just a straight up damage increasing ability once again something you might want to change out if you notice you're dying a lot you could switch out the mantra of healing or something like that but personally I've been having a lot of fun with annihilation and the mantra of conviction but if you need to change this one out by all means change it to what you want to be playing as as far as the passives go first and foremost we got trans Ascendance, which is just probably the best passive that a monk has. It basically allows you to heal up for every single point of spirit spent and um, with the lashing tail kick ability you are constantly spending spirit which allows you to just heal yourself up to full health constantly. The next up we have one with everything. Your resistance to all elements is equal to your highest elemental resistance. Now this passive is just a straight up toughness increase, um, something you might want to change, but most of the time this is definitely something I would advise you to run. Next up we have Seize the Initiative, your armor is increased by 30% of your dexterity, once again a straight up toughness increase, however maybe you want to be changing this one out for something like the Beacon of Etar, reduces all cooldowns and most and foremost the Epiphany cooldown by 20%, uh, meaning that you are allowed to spam that one more often. However Seize the Initiative, a very very strong armor increase and if you notice you're dying a lot, you can definitely give this one a try. And last but not least, we got Exalted Soul. It increases my maximum spirit by 100 and increases the spirit regeneration by 2 per second. Now this is once again something that allows you to spam the Lashing Tail Kick ability more often. And something like Fleet Footed or Beacon of Etar is once again a really good change. Maybe something even like the Mythic Rhythm, um, which is also allowing you to do extra damage. Uh, might be something that you want to be checking out. However, these are the passives that I've personally been running and I've been having a lot of fun with. Now I've personally been enjoying the monk a whole lot. The class is, like I said, probably the favorite next to the witch doctor so far. Um, it is definitely one of these classes that doesn't really die a whole lot. I can basically take on as much as I possibly want and I can always get out with the serenity ability that I got as well as the epiphany ability that just deals tons and tons of damage. However, if you do notice that you're um, not dealing as much damage as you'd like, you definitely might want to change out a couple of the passives that I'm running, simply because mine are mostly focused on having a lot of toughness. That said, I would definitely use these abilities and these passives as a starting point for your own monk, so maybe you can change it accordingly later when you're more comfortable with the playstyle. Keep in mind that you're trying to get as much gear as possible that deals extra lightning damage because that is just a straight up damage increase ability. Sometimes it might happen that you lose 8% damage on the actual character sheet. However, if that one skill deals 15% extra lightning damage, it is 99% of the time going to be worth it as long as you're using abilities that have the lightning rune on it. So yeah, that is pretty much it. A very, very awesome monk build. Focus mostly on lightning damage. I would recommend you try and get a character up to level 7 roll this build, try and get gear with extra um, lightning damage modifiers and hopefully you'll be able to own Torment 1 and 2 just as easily as I'm currently doing it and maybe even higher if your gear is better than mine, which honestly is definitely doable. Now next up, as far as Diablo 3 goes, I'm going to be creating a level 70 crusader guide so make sure to hit the subscribe button below and you will be the first to actually get that notification when that video is up. Hopefully I will be able to upload it next week, which would conclude all the level 70 build guides that I've been doing for Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls so far. Um, obviously I'm going to be updating them along the way, so either way, if you're interested in more monk content as well, big chance I'm going to be uploading it, so also in that case make sure to hit the subscribe button. Other than that, I want to thank you guys all for watching, have an amazing day, do not forget to smile, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Hello everyone, my name is Loco, and welcome to a new Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls video. Today I'm going to...